two of the much anticipated Simpson small form factor PC tribute and I'm with Brad and if you can tell us what this image is on the forum or on the YouTube page please do you'll see it in the new Coen Brothers movie coming out so I taken this image and um, off the internet and what I did is I reversed it because we're going to do the etching on the back side of the plexiglass so that means that your text would read backwards if uh, you don't reverse your image Brad's just going to take the reversed image and tape it on to our acrylic sheet and you really wouldn't have to do this if you uh, if you didn't have text, right? No, it's not really necessary. It's pretty much so we can read the Duff beer from the outside of the glass. And by etching the inside portion of the glass, it will actually uh, look better when the interior of the case is illuminated. This is pretty much what I look like when I get home from work. All right, nice. Now, the uh, bit that Brad's going to use to do the etching, this is just a carbide bit with a pointed tip on it. This is just a generic one that I picked up. That is for doing um, our fine line etching. And then if you want to do any kind of shadowing, this carbide bit is number 107 by Dremel. And you see it's got a a round head on it and you can do some wider shading with that. For the etching we're using a Craftsman cordless rotary tool and this is just a 4.8 volt and it's got a high and low speed on it and Brad's going to pretty much just keep it at low speed as he etches. So Brad, have you? oh one more thing I should mention is that um, We've got the piece of acrylic on a nice towel here. The reason being is because you don't want to scratch the uh, backside as you're working um, on a regular surface. So make sure you put a towel or something underneath take, your take acrylic. Take your watch off too. Yeah, exactly. And it always helps to have plenty of good lighting. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this shop light here and then just light in front of the acrylic to help Brad see. How's it feel Brad? Very good. See now I'm really digging in to the grooves that were made previously. Hardest part right there is that Duff logo. Uh -huh. But it must be done. To do the shaded area in Homer's face, we're going to use Dremel attachment number 107, and this is an engraving cutter and it can be used high or low speed and it's made for precision engraving and ideal for detail engraving, carving, routing in wood, fiberglass, ceramics, plastic and um, I'm going to go ahead and try that out Brad and just kind of shadow in around his face. Brad's just doing the finishing touches, shadowing in the remote control. And is that the last step, Brad? What else have you got to do on that? That is it. And this bit worked really nice. Yeah, it does. All uh, right. I'm glad that uh, we decided to shadow in. The yeah, well there, worth Ken, the effort. And his face, and the remote, the remote control. That was it was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Those tiny little buttons on there, but I think that's really going to look cool. 
as a top window. Oh, that's beautiful. Next night, I took Brad's finished window and I did a pre-fitting in the top panel of the Microfly Cube. And I illuminated it using two four-inch blue cold cathode lights, one on either side of the image. And the ceiling of the case illuminated. And as you can see, it really turned out nice. Then, this last week, I had gotten back to what I wanted to do was a new bezel for the Microfly. And if you recall in the first segment, I wanted to mount two 120 millimeter fans as intakes. And uh, that's Brad's Mr. Sparkle t-shirt. And I kind of grabbed from that logo for uh, the intake holes, uh, kind of a turbine swirl design. And for the front bezel, we're using one and a half inch thick 6061 aluminum. And we're over at Steve's house here milling the new bezel for the case and that was a day-long project um, this slab of aluminum originally weighed 22 pounds and the end result was about two and a half pounds uh, you can see that it just came out gorgeous um, very simple design but stylish uh, I only wanted to utilize a power switch and a reset button well actually no that's a hard drive activity that other hole there and then there's just enough space for two five and a quarter drives and it looks just like we originally intended. Um, there I am pre-fitting it onto the chassis. And uh, if you recall, the idea I had was to pocket the two fans. So they sat flush in the back side. And you can see here that they're not in the chassis. They're just on the face of the chassis when they're mounted. Um, I think it really came out nice. Um, next was dropping off the milled bezel to a uh, local anodizer to have it anodized blue which just came out gorgeous um, I was really happy with the results and it's a nice Simpson shade of blue as you can see if the yellow it really looks nice um, meanwhile Brad had some ideas for making his own new side windows out of blue translucent acrylic and uh, I don't know if Brad had ever used a vertical saw before or not, but uh, and here he is using the drill press to make the holes, and he's using a plaz drill drill bit for cutting acrylic. Um, so I'm gonna have to leave it there, and you guys have to tune in. I'm sorry again, and uh, to see how this project has come along. But in the meantime, we've launched a new blog. It's called the Case Mod blog.com and you can follow progress of this project and a lot of other projects too out on the web until the next vi video segment gets posted um, also if you know of any cool mods or projects out there on the web submit it to us and we'll post it up in the blog if we really think it's cool and uh, we're sharing it for everybody but until the next segment thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you out in the forums and over at the new casemonblog.com. Thank you.